Our scripture lesson today comes from Revelation 21, 1 through 9. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the Holy Spirit, or Holy City, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people." And God himself shall be with them and be with their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there, shall, and there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear God, may my words be of you, and those words that are not of you, may they fall upon deaf ears. Amen. I use a different translation. It said fire and brimstone. So strap in not going to be a fire and brimstone day just because the words were there. But um, last week, uh, um, some of you already know that Brown Summit has a new pianist over there, and um, he is a classically trained concert pianist. Um, and so he was having a concert in Greensboro down at Christ, or not Christ, but um, Centenary in Greensboro, which is a big, traditional, huge Methodist church in, um, in that's just uh, nearby the, uh, the hospital. And so he was having this concert, and I went to go see him play. And um, I grew up, most of you know by now, I was a music major in college. I grew up playing piano. But there was uh, always that point, and even when I got into college and was playing in college, there's, there's this thing that kind of all pianists know is kind of the gold standard of piano playing. If you've reached this gold standard of piano playing, you aren't just good. You're, you, you can throw a concert and raise and be paid for it. Like, that's how good you are. And that standard is um, if you can play Rachmaninoff. Has anyone ever heard of Rachmaninoff? A few people have. Um, Rock, first of all, most people can't pronounce Rachmaninoff. And so if you can play Rachmaninoff, you're doing even better. But it's, so I got to this concert, and he had a few things on the, um, the program that I, I knew, but he had this one Rachmaninoff piece. And so immediately I knew that he was very good before I, and I knew he was good before I went down there, but um, I immediately knew that he was very good and a phenomenal piano player because he could play this piece. But he sat down and, and played it, and I'm, you know, um, sitting there and listening and, and trying to um, enjoy the moment and not be just enthralled with um, how everything is moving. Um, how his singers are moving on the keys and, and how he technically is just brilliant, um, just a brilliant piano player. And, and also, um, artistically, he's just a brilliant piano player. And it's this beautiful art that he has created. And at the end of the day, it's this beautiful piece and this beautiful art that he's created. And if you've ever seen someone, whether it's playing piano or whether it's a, a ballet or whether it's something that just is, is phenomenal art, um, you know that there are those people in the world that make it look easy. Just make it look like it's not a problem at all. Like they just picked that up one day and decided to start playing it and or, or dancing it or, or whatever that thing, creating it, doing the artwork. Um, and you think that that must have been the first time that they did it. 
You know, and, and you know in your, in your mind and your heart and your rational thinking that that's not true. It, this guy had to hit a thousand rat, bad notes. He had to go back to the basics of, of learning what a key was and, and where you put your fingers and how you curve your fingers. And, um, you know, you have to go to those basics. And he probably has been playing since he was six, seven, eight years old. And there were a lot of bad notes in that time. There were a lot of moments where his parents were probably like, oh, please. Stop playing the piano. <laughs> Don't play it anymore. Because there are so many bad keys that you have to go through. And, and throughout his life, he, he probably built upon this one after another. So that now he's not only hitting, he's, he, he's not only hitting a, a good note every once in a while, but he's hitting more good notes than bad notes. And, and in fact, he gets to a certain point where he's been playing for 15, 20, 30 years and, and he's hitting a lot of good notes, and he can sit down on the piano, and he can, we throw him stuff all the time, he can just sight read um, very easily, but but still, he he would have poured out over this rock on and off piece for hours and hours and hours and days and days, and probably even years between getting the notes right and, and learning the art form out of it and, and getting um, everything memorized. But at the end of the day, last Sunday, he sat down and played beautifully so that no one even could tell all the work that he was putting in. It's a process to get to that beautiful music. It's a process that has to be gone, gone through over and over again. And, and it's a painful process at times where you just don't know when the notes are going to come together right, when you just don't know um, if music will ever happen. And some of you here today, and I would probably most of us here today, are waiting to hear the music in some way. We're waiting patiently, wondering um, what, that is, what that day is going to look like and when that day is going to come. And, and some of you are in painful times where it seems like not even one note is right. And, and some of you are in better times, but still it just... It seems like you, you can't figure out where the end is. This passage describes a waiting period. And they, they describe this waiting period of, um, of New Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem being revealed as a, a bride beautifully adorned for her husband. And I can't help but think about the pageantry of, of weddings and that um, of, of weddings that happens and, and the waiting period and the process of, of weddings now. I don't think that the wedding day was quite the same back then. I don't think that the imagery of a bride is quite the same imagery that we have. Um, I, I don't know that, that they did the same thing that we do, but, but some of you have been involved in weddings lately, whether it's a loved one or, or yourself. Um, you, you know this this process of, of what happens right now in, in, in bridal culture. It's, uh, what happens is we separate the men and the women, and the woman takes all day long to get wet, to get ready. You know what I'm going to say next. <laughs> the man takes two seconds to put on his tug and go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so the man's standing there, the, and it doesn't matter what wedding it is or how long the, the bride took, but there is a certain point where the man is standing at the end waiting for the woman to come down the aisle. Um, and it's this beautiful moment that happens, though, that, that when, after waiting, after this painful waiting, after this time that, um, for some people it takes years, that, that this bride is finally coming down the aisle, you know what happens next. You've all seen it. All of us have seen it recently um, with a gentleman standing at the back of the room. The, the groom's face lights up when he sees that bride. It's the most amazing moment where you know that that, that groom is finally excited and, and ready and, and has seen his bride finally come to fruition. We have some manifestations here on earth of, of what New Jerusalem is going to look like. We can see sparks of it in the laughs of others and the smiles of others. When we serve others, we see a little bit of Christ in others. But still... We don't see it quite as clearly. We're, we're waiting on that new Jerusalem to happen. We're waiting on that bride to come, that bride of Jesus Christ. 
And so often the temptation is to give up hope when we don't see results, when the bad notes are still coming and we still have heartbreak and it's, it's hard to remember what is to come. But this earth has its wonderful moments. It has moments of happiness and laughter and love and it's not quite heaven and it's not quite the new earth and it's not quite here yet. But it gives us that hope. See that hope. See that faith and, and keep the love of each other in this waiting period. 